Um, okay, so our next speaker will again be uh, virtual. This will be Yaxin Liu from Emory University. And they will give a talk titled Effective Factors Affect Visual Spatial Decision Making, a Drift Diffusion Modeling Approach. Thank you very much, uh, Yaxin. Uh, so you'll have 15 minutes, uh, and then we have five minutes for questions. OK, can you hear me? Hi, my name is Yaxin Liu, and I'll be talking about some work that I have collaborated on with my advisor, Stola Luranko, on how effective factors affect visual spatial decision making using a drift decision making using a drift diffusion modeling approach. Spatial reasoning and visualization is important for everyday tasks, such as navigating space and interacting with the objects around us. But visualization is also crucial for unlocking scientific breakthroughs. For example, it was the mental imagining of atoms twisting and turning like snakes that is thought to have been the visual origins of the discovery of the benzene ring. One cognitive test that has been closely linked to the visual origins of spatial processing is called mental rotation. In this classic test, you mentally represent two objects on screen. If you are able to rotate one object into the other in your mind, then these are the same objects. If not, then these are the mirrored objects, like your left and right hands. It is known that research in mental rotation has found large individual and gender differences in test performance. And the magnitude of the gender differences is one of the largest found in cognition. Performance on mental rotation tests also predicts success in STEM domains. However, it remains controversial why such differences exist. Traditionally, research has emphasized the role of cognitive factors, such as working memory, on these differences. More recently, Research has paid increasing attention to effective factors such as spatial anxiety, but it is an open question how such effective factors affect test performance. Here, we break down test processes into different stages. After the encoding of stimulus, there is first the information uptake processes, and second, the decision stage processes. Although affective factors can have influences on all stages, we specifically examine the role of affective factors on these two stages. We use a novel computational modeling approach, namely drift diffusion modeling, to formalize the stages of the processes. An advantage of this approach is that the rotational processes can be disentangled from the decision stage processes. Here at the starting point, one is equally likely to choose either the same versus different choices. As stimuli are nosily accumulated, the drift rate V represents the average slope of the information uptake towards either decision. Once enough evidence is accumulated to reach the decision boundary alpha, which is separated by the distance between the two choices, a decision is initiated. If we hold the decision boundary constant, a slower drift rate here means slower processing. Whereas a higher decision threshold or boundary means more evidence accumulation often interpreted as response caution or effort. We will examine how effective factors influence both the drift rate and the decision threshold in the test processes. In the current study, we instructed participants to respond as quickly and as accurately as possible so that the test involves speed accuracy trade-off. We presented a two-force choice mental rotation task in which participants respond whether the two choices are the same or mirrored. The angular differences between the two objects varied, leading to varied difficulty. 
throughout the task, in randomly selected trials, participants rated their levels of anxiety, confidence, and motivation in random order. And at the end of the task, we assess trait anxiety as a control for more general anxiety. Before we delve into how affective factors influence model parameters, let's look at whether the drift rate and the decision threshold change as a function of the angular difference from one de uh, zero degree to 150 degree. As the angular difference increases, the drift rate linearly decreases, meaning that the processing efficiency is slower. Decision threshold, however, appears to increase, meaning that more evidence accumulation occurs as angular difference increases. Next, we regress anxiety, confidence, and motivation on drift rates of individual participants while controlling for trade anxiety. We found that <coughs> whereas anxiety was negatively associated with drift rates, confidence and motivation were positively associated with drift rates, meaning that anxiety disrupts information efficiency, but confidence and motivation seem to enhance it. We also found a similar pattern of the effects of anxiety and confidence in decision threshold, though not all associations were statistically significant. To better understand these effects, we did a trial by trial analysis. We used Bayesian regression to examine the momentary influences of affective factors by regressing affective ratings from the previous trial on drift rate and decision threshold onto the next trial. Let's look at the drift rate first. A zero coefficient line plotted here means no effect. A negative coefficient on the left of the line means the effect has a negative relationship, whereas a positive coefficient means a positive association. Here we are showing results from the easy versus difficult trials. As you can see, the effects are largely consistent with previous analysis, though not all are reaching statistical significance. One interesting effect here is that motivation appears to be modulated by difficulty, such that higher motivation has a significant role in the easy trials compared to the harder trials. For decision threshold, we found the effects of competence and motivation were largely consistent with the previous res results. However, anxiety was not statistically significant either for easy or hard trials suggesting that the effects of anxiety may be less robust than confidence and motivation when considered at a trial by trial basis. To briefly summarize, we examined the role of anxiety, confidence, and motivation on drift rate and decision threshold. Here are the main findings from the results. Anxiety decreased both drift rate and decision threshold though trial by trial analysis showed an attenuated effect and differences with respect to difficulty. Confidence increased both drift rate and decision threshold, even at trial by trial level. Motivation increased drift rate, but at the trial by trial level, only for easy trials, <coughs> the effects on decision threshold appear less robust. Now, I want to turn to potential gender differences in mental rotation. Gender differences on this type of test are large and are thought to contribute to women's underrepresentation in STEM fields. Although many people acknowledge the role of socialization in these gender differences, less is known about how affective factors such as anxiety, confidence, and motivation may impact performance. Here, we look at these potential effects on male and female performance on the mental rotation task. For simplicity, 
Here, we compare group differences in drift rate and the decision threshold between male and female participants without considering the difficulty of the trials. We found a gender difference in drift rate such that females had a lower drift rate compared to males. We also found a marginal gender difference in decision threshold, such that females had a lower decision threshold compared to males. Next, we examined gender differences in affective ratings. We found significant gender differences in anxiety and confidence, but not motivation. Note that such differences exist even in grad trials only. Given the relationship between <laughs> gender and model parameters, gender differences in anxiety and confidence, and their relationship between model parameters, we tested whether anxiety or confidence mediate the relationship between gender and model parameters. The mediation models revealed that with the inclusion of confidence but not anxiety, the direct effect between gender and model parameters become non-significant, suggesting that confidence, but not anxiety, mediate the paths between this link. Because we did not find <coughs> gender differences in motivation, but we were nevertheless interested in its role to the mediated effect of confidence, we tested the role of motivation as a moderator. In this analysis, the levels of motivation were split between people with low versus high levels of motivation. And what we found was that when motivation was low, confidence partially mediated the effect from gender to model parameters. However, when motivation was high, confidence was not a significant mediator between gender and model parameters, meaning that among people with high levels of motivation, there was no gender differences in both confidence and model parameters. These effects demonstrate that when confidence mediates the gender difference in mental rotation performance, it depends on the levels of motivation. To conclude, in this work, we shed new light on the potential roles of affective factors in visual spatial tests. We asked, do affective factors affect visual spatial decision-making? And the answer is yes. But how? We found that affective factors differentially impact information processing and decision stage processing. Finally, we found that affective factors account for the gender differences in visual spatial tests through the mediation link of confidence and the <coughs> moderation link of motivation. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions you might have. Hey, thank you, Exim, for that great talk. Um, we have about five minutes for questions. So if any of the live audience have a question, you can maybe raise your hand. And I think there's a mic over there. Yeah, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, thank can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you for the great talk. Um, I was wondering, uh, whether you ever tried to induce con uh, confidence or anxiety and see whether the, the effects are causal because I've been working in a like similar area and I mean, yeah, this is the next step. So did you try that yet? Yes, excellent point. So we are currently uh, doing some experimental manipulation on motivation and confidence. So what we did is we present easy versus hard trials in um different sequential order. So people who are exposed with uh, easy trials will get a confidence or motivation boost versus people who are exposed with hard trials first, they get a diminished uh, 
motivation or confidence. So we did find some differences respect to the um, trial order. Uh, we have yet to examine the gender differences specifically, but it seems to suggest that uh, at least uh, in the trip for the uh, model parameters, we find that uh, the decision thresholds was lower if the confidence were, uh, or motivation was diminished. Okay, cool, thank you. Um, how are you accounting for individual differences in self-report? So confidence, for example, some people are, they just report themselves to be more confident. Some people just report themselves to be less confident. And then this becomes even more complicated with anxieties. How do we know that you're actually measuring stable anxiety across individuals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent questions. Uh, so we <laughs> included the trade anxiety questionnaire, which could help potentially because we controlled it in our analysis. And the trade uh, anxiety questionnaire as the general questions uh, in terms of general anxiety or confidence. Uh, so it could potentially help to dis dissociate from the more momentary anxiety. But I think it's an important point to address individual differences uh, more generally. And uh, we think we might have some other questionnaires uh, regards to spatial anxiety in the future. All right, thank you. <laughs> 